What's going on Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video and in this video I want to discuss with you guys some of the recent news that has been coming out of camp as well as some of the transactions that the Raiders have made. Now this morning the Raiders have officially cut cornerback Prince of Makamaru, the veteran that the Raiders just brought in, who a lot of people thought was going to start. I personally thought that there was a good chance that he would end up starting for this team because let's face it, rookies generally don't start in the NFL unless you're a special rookie. If I had to guess now after this cut, I would assume that the Raiders are going to start Trayvon Mullen on one end and Arnett on the other, which is going to give the Raiders the youngest starting duo now of course you know we're gonna play a nickel a whole lot which means lamarcus joiner will be uh, in there playing the slot but i really like where our secondary is at i mean if you just take a step back and kind of look at where we're at as far as like age and talent uh, we have three guys who are either in their first or second year starting right with jonathan abram trayvon mullen and arnett that's three guys who are either in their first or second year. And Abram, you can kind of say he's still in this first year because he didn't play at last year, right? He had the season ending injury. A lot of you guys have been asking me because we're so young, isn't that a bit of a concern? And I definitely think it would be. Um, however, I think with Mullen and Abram, we kind of know what we're gonna get with those guys. And I think those two guys are gonna be very good uh, football players. Arnett, I haven't seen him, right? No one's seen him, there's no preseason. But the, the initial reports of Arnett are good. There is a possibility that he turns into a very good player as well. Uh, and of course, there was that video released uh, earlier, a couple weeks ago where he uh, intercepted the ball, uh, guarding Henry Ruggs. Um, and it looks like he can play the ball well, right? At least in the air, he can find it. You know, we've had some good corners who just struggled finding the ball when it's in the air, you know? And that's the difference of a pass interference and, and maybe just swatting the ball down. Overall, it's gonna be very exciting to just kind of see where our secondary ends up. Um, you know, we have to cover a lot of speed when we play the Chiefs, you know, the Broncos got much better. The fact that we have to cover a lot of good wide receivers, a lot of speed, we need young players that can run. Uh, Makamaru would have been a good player, but I, you know, wasn't sure if he still had that speed and maybe he lost a step. Uh, well, bringing in players like uh, Keyshawn Nixon and Isaiah Johnson last year with Trayvon Mullen, uh, and then bringing in uh, Arnett this year, as well as Meek Robertson, you're getting that speed back in there, right? LaMarcus Joyner might be the slowest guy we have, um, but he's very quick still, right? He's smaller, he's quick still. Uh, he is older, uh, but he's he's a good player, right? Slot is easily the hardest position to play on defense because you're in the, you know, you're essentially guarding the middle of the field, right? A receiver can go right or left, as opposed to if you're on the outside, you really have the boundaries on your outside helping you out, right? So it's much easier to play corner on the outsides as opposed to on the insides. Um, and I think that's kind of why a player like Amik Robertson hasn't really stuck out in camp, right? I mean, not only does he have to learn the system, the, the Paul Gunther system, uh, but he has to get used to NFL speed, NFL talent. He has to really adjust to where the game's at today, right? He's not in college anymore, he's in the NFL. Once he does get used to the game speed, I also believe that he'll be a very solid corner. But it's gonna be exciting, man. Roster cuts are coming the next couple of days, couple of weeks, we'll know exactly where our team's at. Uh, we're very deep, you know? Wide receiving is a group that I really wanna know where we're at, right? Um, the reason why is because we're so talented, we're so deep. Um, you know, you have the two rookies, you have uh, Hunter Renfro, you have Tyra Williams, who's under contract this year. Then you got Aguilar, you got Zay Jones, Rico Gafford, right? You have a lot of good wide receivers. And then you got uh, Keelan Doss, right? There's some good wide receivers here, right? And the thing is, is we aren't gonna keep 10 guys, right? We're not gonna keep 10 wide receivers. We'll keep five max, which is gonna be interesting because you already know that Renfro, Edwards, Ruggs are gonna make the roster. Tyra Williams is gonna make the roster as well. Now, the thing with Williams is he could possibly hit IR, right? We'll kind of see what happens. Maybe he's not 100% healthy, um, but you know, if you cut a player and another team picks him up, then you kind of lose out on that player. But, you know, I want to see where this wide receiving group ends up. You know, I really like Rico Gafford. You know, he brings that speed. He didn't play wide receiver just two years ago. So learning a whole new position is hard. Um, but last year, if you look at the second half of last year, he had a couple of deep catches for touchdowns. So he had some catches in between the numbers. He was doing pretty well last year, you know? So it's gonna be interesting to kind of see where he's at. I hope he makes this team because with him and Ruggs on the field at the same time, that's gonna be a hard duo to stop, right? I mean, the guys bring speed and then you have Darren Waller who's been unstoppable in camp. 
this roster with the wide receivers is really shaping up. Now, obviously we're super young, right? Corners, receivers, we're, we're super young. So it's gonna really depend on how those two units perform because corners are easily the most important unit on defense, right? You have to be able to guard uh, Patrick Mahomes' weapons, right? You have to be able to stop uh, Tom Brady's weapons, right? And that's gonna start with those corners, being able to lock up those wide receivers. You know, a quarterback can throw the ball in less than two seconds, a sack does not come in less than two seconds, right? Sacks average about four seconds. Uh, passes average about two and a half seconds. So if you, you're able to get corners that can stick on the receivers a little bit longer, uh, you're able to impact that uh, that quarterback just that much more. Having young corners is going to be tough. You know, I, I think the Raiders to win this year, they're going to have to score a lot of points. And that's kind of where the, the receiving group comes into play. Yeah, they're young, but Brian Edwards has been a stud in camp, and I'm really excited to watch him during the regular season. People have asked me, what are my expectations uh, with the receiving group this year? Uh, personally, I think Waller will obviously have the most catches. He's the best player between the uh, in the receiving group. But then after Waller, I it's you know it's kind of up there. You know, a lot of people would have said Tyrell Williams. Some might have said Rugs. I think Renfro is going to get the second most catches. And don't be surprised if Renfro out catches uh, Darren Waller. You know, Waller had a lot of three, four, five yard catches last year. I think Renfro is going to get a lot of those targets this year. Um, I think Brian Edwards can easily have the third most catches on this team. You know, this year specifically, I think Ruggs is going to have a harder time adjusting uh, to the NFL than Brian Edwards because Brian Edwards, right off the bat between those two guys, Brian Edwards is already bigger. Right, so he's gonna be able to use that as an advantage as opposed to Ruggs has speed, but everybody in the NFL has speed, right? And then you're gonna you're gonna get two guys over, you know, one guy over the top. You know, Ruggs is no longer the third best wide receiver on his team, right? Like he was at Alabama. He was the third best wide receiver, he had the third most catches. This year he's he's not that, right? This year he is supposedly the second best pass catcher and, and probably the best receiver. So he's gonna get those double teams, he's gonna get bracketed. So he's going to have a harder time adjusting because teams know that he ran a 4-2-40 40 and, and that he's going to be the guy that's going to bring that speed. Teams are going to bracket him and, and shut that down. So he's going to have a huge learning curve. No one knows who Brian Edwards is, right? Teams aren't preparing for Brian Edwards, right? They're going to prepare for Darren Waller and they're going to prepare for Henry Ruggs. No one's going to prepare for Brian Edwards. So I can see Edwards having a big impact his rookie year, possibly having the third most catches. Um, you know, and at the same time, never sleep on, on Nelson Aguilar or Zay Jones. You know, either of those guys can can get a lot of catches. Those guys can get targets. They have a lot to prove, right? Those guys are close to being out of the league. Maybe not Nelson Aguilar, uh, but Zay Jones is close to being out of the league, right? He has like maybe one more contract if it doesn't work out with the Raiders to prove himself. So he's hungry. You know, these, these receivers are hungry um, and it's exciting, man. I'm super, super pumped up for this season. I'm super pumped. I can't wait for these next two weeks to just kind of fly by. Uh, but another roster move the Raiders did. We traded for a linebacker over the weekend. Uh, Dolphins linebacker Raquan McMillan, who was only 24 years old. The Raiders went out and traded a fourth round pick for him. And now we didn't just give up a fourth round pick. We got a fifth round pick as well as the player in return, which is fantastic, right? Uh, yeah, fourth round pick is super high. You know, you can get a player like Max Crosby in the fourth round. Uh, not only did we trade the fourth round, but we got a fifth back, which I'm okay with, right? You move down 30 spots, but you get that player with it. And for the Raiders, you know, we have Corey Littleton. We have Nick Kukowski. And a lot of people kind of ask, is Kukowski not there? Is he not performing well? That's not the case. That's not why the Raiders brought in McMillan. To be honest with you guys, the Raiders do play a 4-3, right? I don't know if, if you guys forget, but we need three linebackers in that 4-3. So what that means is we need a downhill linebacker. We need a guy that can play strong side linebacker. Corey Littleton and Kukowski are coverage linebackers. When we're in that nickel package, they'll be the two guys in and McMillan will come off the field. Uh, but when it comes to run downs, first downs, uh, when it comes to short distance downs, McMillan's going to be the guy. He's going to be in there to make those plays. And that's the sole reason why we brought him in. I really believe that the Raiders with their linebackers are super sad. Like, I, I don't think we've had this type of a linebacker unit in the last five years. And even past that, you know, the last good linebacking group that I remember as a Raider fan is like Thomas Howard and Kirk Morrison years, you know, and that was a long time ago. You know, those were the, the years that uh, I remember 
uh, the Raiders being very solid, right? I think like Thomas Sarge, Kirk Morrison each had like five, six interceptions, which is crazy to think that linebackers can get that many interceptions because that doesn't happen uh, nowadays, right? I mean, that was a long time ago, right? But this year, man, this could be the year that we can have that good pass coverage linebacking unit. You know, we haven't had good linebackers like this for a number of years. I think bringing in McMillan's a smart move, right? It allows a player like uh, Corey Littleton or Kwiatkowski to even come out if we want to play nickel on first down uh, because Corey Littleton or Kwiatkowski might not be the best one stopping linebackers. Overall, this linebacking group's really shaping up, right? Uh, McMillan was ranked as the 10th best run stopping linebacker last year. Uh, and that with Kwiatkowski, with Littleton, with uh, Morrow, we'll really see where this linebacking group shapes up and don't forget the undrafted free agent Javin White you know a lot of people have been super high on him he's gotten a lot of praise from the coaching staff this group man from the young cornerbacks to the uh, linebackers right the group to the young defense linemen and even the veteran defense linemen like our defense and roster in general is so stacked that we cut a player like Prince of Makamara who can easily go to another team and start he was a starter just last year and the year before that. The Raiders are cutting players who could possibly be starters, and that's how deep our roster is. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is a player that actually just got hurt. It came out yesterday. Uh, safety Derwin James of the Los Angeles Chargers. If you guys don't remember, I remind you guys, the Raiders took Colton Miller right before the Chargers took Derwin James. And that's kind of been the comparison. right? That the Raiders pass on uh, uh, all pro safety, pro bowler Derwin James. And they took a average left tackle in Colton Miller, who they could have got in the fifth round, right? That's what everybody always says. Uh, even though that's not true, right? Colton Miller would have been taken in the first round. If the Raiders didn't take Colton Miller, the Patriots would have taken him in the, with the 22nd overall pick. The Patriots that same year took a, a different left tackle, Isaiah Wynn, who's been hurt every year, right? The guy just can't stay healthy. But they would have loved to take Colton Miller. My point in bringing up Dur the Derwin James injury is not only does it impact the Chargers and it helps the Raiders, but more than that, I think the Raiders made the smart move not taking Derwin James. And I know people will say, well, he's an all-pro safety. If he's healthy and he will be healthy again, he's still the better player over Colton Miller. I still think that, you know, as Mr. Gruden says, the best ability is availability. If you're not available to play, what use are you, right? Darwin James can miss this whole entire year, which means that he'll be going into year four next year. So think about that. Going into year four, into you know the, the final year, unless they pick up his fifth year option, they're gonna have to pay him right after that. And he's gonna want the top safety salary, right? So that's 17, 18 million dollars a year, whatever it is. That's what he's gonna want. But on the other end, Coy Miller is not gonna get paid as a top left tackle, right? He's gonna get paid, you know, maybe it's 12, 13, 14 million dollars, which I don't know where that falls within the tackle range. Maybe he'll be paid as the 10th highest offensive tackle. Either way, the Raiders are gonna pay Colton Miller much less than what a, a top left tackle gets paid. And the Chargers are gonna have to pay Derwin James what the, the top safety is gonna make. And the thing is, is one player has been hurt, right? Colton Miller was hurt. Uh, his rookie year but he played every single game colin miller has yet to miss a game he started the last 32 games and as an offensive tackle year two three four five you get so much better as a safety you start off you come into the league and, and like you'll be you know at like 75 percent of what you are year two you're at like 98 percent of what you're going to be year three you are who you are right? You'll be an all pro player, which Derwin James is, but by year five, six, and seven, you're already coming downwards as an offensive tackle is going to just enter his prime in year five, six, and seven. The reason why I'm over explaining all of this is because the Raiders made the right decision. And I think this just further backs it up. You know, a safety is not the most important position, right? It's always offensive linemen over safeties. It's always corners over safeties, you know, quarterback over everything else. Uh, there's a reason why safeties like Jamal Adams, who is the best safety in the league, gets traded. There's a reason why Tyron Matthew, who could possibly be the second best safety after Jamal Adams, is on his third or fourth team already, and he's still young, 
right there's a reason why these safeties are not able to stay on one team it's because safeties are not as valuable as offensive linemen um, it's nice to have a great safety uh, but they don't have the same impacts that a great corner a great offense tackle could have and i personally believe that colton miller is on the path to be a very solid offensive lineman i think year three is going to be the year that he proves everybody wrong as do i think year two is the year that cleveland Farrell proves everyone wrong I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button. Now I'll see you guys next time with another video.